We're going to talk about infinite limits. Would it bug you if I said that instead of infinite? No. Infinite? The limit is infinity. All right. Let's consider f of x, f of x equals uh, 3 over x minus 2. 3 over x minus 2. Well, it should say let's consider the graph. Let's consider the graph of this. So draw your axes. So we, uh, we just barely talked about this on the quiz. Remember that 10 minute sidetrack? What's the graph of this going to look like? x minus 2 is at the bottom. Can x equal 2? No, it can't. What do we put there then? Um, vertical asymptote. Do we always put a vertical asymptote when the denominator is undefined? Yeah. Always? No. no. Sometimes it's just a hole. How do we know? <laughs> if, it's, if it's removable. This is non removable. So there's going to be a vertical asymptote at x equals 2. There is also going to be a horizontal. It's where? Zero. Zero. Because you can't divide it. If we took 3 and tried to divide it by x minus 2, is that division possible? No. No. The division is 0. So the horizontal asymptote must be 0. Zero. Other key points you ought to find before graphing are intercept. Let's find the y intercept. That's pretty easy. The y intercept. You plug in a zero for x. It's negative three halves. So negative three halves has a decimal. It's negative one point five. So the y intercept. The y intercept is negative one point five. I mentioned it briefly, but you might not have heard. How do you find the x-intercepts? You plug a zero in for f of x, you're right. That's absolutely right. But if it's a rational function, the whole entire fraction is only ever going to equal zero when the numerator equals zero. So where does the numerator ever equal zero? It never does. It always equals three. So there are no x-intercepts, right? So this one point right here is sufficient to really describe the entire behavior of the graph on both sides. Because one point here is below the x-axis, what does that mean about all the points here? All, they're all below. They're all below. As a graph approaches a vertical asymptote, if you remember from last year, it doesn't just stop. It either has to turn down to negative infinity or turn up to positive infinity. Now... Do we know for sure that the graph's going to be up here or down here? Could it be down here? Good. we got to test the point. So let's test 3. 3 over 3 minus 2? So if x is 3, it would be 3 over 3 minus 2, which is 3 over 1. So when x is 3, what's y? 3. So we have a point right there. That one point is sufficient to describe the entire behavior of that piece of the graph. How come? Because there's no way to do it. So it has to be completely above the x axis. On that end. Oh, that wasn't good. That's considered a continuous function. Is it continuous on the real number line? On the whole real number line? There's a big line. There's a discontinuity at 2. Is the graph continuous from negative infinity to 0, for, for example? Yes. Yeah. Is it continuous from 0 to 1? Yes. So there are intervals on which it is continuous, but is it continuous on the entire number line? No. It's, there's a discontinuity at 2. So anyway, what we need to talk about then are limits. So let's consider the function here and its graph. And finally this, the limit as x approaches 2 plus of f of x, and the limit as x approaches 2 minus 
of f of x. Up until now, we've seen functions whose limit approached a specific value. The limit as x approaches 3 was 5, or the limit was 0, or the limit doesn't exist, right? Yeah. What's the title of this lesson? Infinite, Infinite <laughs> limits. So let's track this one right here, the one from the positive side. Okay, the limit is of f of x as x approaches 2. So if I'm coming from the right, moving to the left, am I approaching 2 on the x values? Yes. So if I'm tracing along this graph, the x values are getting closer to 2, right? Yeah. What are the y values getting closer to? Infinity. Positive or negative? Positive. We have to differentiate. So as x is approaching 2 from the right side, the f of x values are approaching? Positive. That's an infinite limit. It doesn't approach a specific value. It increases without bound. The closer and closer and closer you get to 2 from the right side, the graph's just going to get higher and higher and higher. So that's, you all have to like put that. Oh, because it already says it. That's the approaches. So you have to specify. Yeah. You know. Why would this not, that's a great, that's a great question. Why would this not make much sense? Did you see what I just did there? I erased the plus sign. Well, because you can't, you can't go through both sides and not only approach the same thing. Exactly. As you approach two from both sides, are you approaching the same thing? No. That's why we're talking about the one-sided limits. That's a great point. It so has to be a one-sided limit. So that one on the right side is actually on the bottom, like, the three sides of the limit originally, and then you can just do a two-sided limit. Because they're both on the bottom. That's a good one. We'll get to that. That's a great question. Um, let's finish this one, though. Okay. Oops, red. Red. Here we go. So, as we approach from the other side, what's happening? So I'm approaching 2 from the negative side. Where is the graph approaching? Negative infinity. Where is this behavior only ever going to occur where a graph approaches a certain value and then approaches infinity at that value? Exponential. Just when there's an asymptote. What kind of asymptote? A vertical, a vertical asymptote. So this kind of behavior occurs at vertical asymptotes. Um, that, that's a that's a slightly different topic that we're going to see a little bit later on. But that's that's not bad to talk about now. Ben was saying, well, what if the graph is approaching? If I understood you right, what if the graph on the x at least isn't approaching a specific x value? What if I said, what's happening as x approaches infinity? What's happening to f of x? F of x would approach 0. Is that what you were asking? Yeah. What about as f of x approaches negative, or as x approaches negative infinity? What's f of x approaching 0? Zero. Those are, those are slightly different than what we're talking about now, but it's, it's still good to talk about. So, the very first part of your homework, the graphs are already provided for you. Isn't that nice? Yeah. So let's take a look at example one. This graph would have already been given to you. So you wouldn't have to graph this on your own. Just copy the graph. So there's a vertical asymptote at x equals 1. And the, the uh, graph looks like this. Yeah, 0 is the horizontal asymptote. Let's say that this graph represents the function f of x 1 over x minus 1 squared.
So Kate's question a little while ago, I don't know if you heard it, is do we always have to, do we always, if I understood it right, do we always have to do one side of limits with these? Is that what you were asking? Yeah. So let's talk about it. What does it mean that a full limit exists? Not just a one-sided, but a full-blown limit. The graph approaches the same value from, from both sides, right? So as x approaches 1 from the right and as x approaches 1 from the left, what's happening here? They're going to the same point. They're going to the same... It's approaching the same thing. It's approaching what? Positive. Positive infinity. So because both sides approach the same thing, do we necessarily need to talk about one side of limits here? So I guess my question is, is does this work? The limit as x approaches just plane 1 of f of x. Or do we need to do a one side of limit here? Do you understand what I'm asking? Yeah. Yeah. Does this limit exist? Yeah. yeah. Why does it exist? From both sides, the graph approaches. Well, x is approaching 1 from both sides, but f of x approaches positive infinity. So this limit exists. And what is the limit? Positive or negative infinity? Positive infinity. Positive infinity. 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 That's going to get really confusing. <laughs> but on the second one, if this were your graph, similar setup. So you have a um, vertical asymptote at x equals 1, horizontal asymptote at 0. But if the function were now negative 1 over x minus 1, The graph would have that kind of behavior. So would it make sense to talk about this then? The limit as x approaches 1? It would. The limit doesn't exist. Okay? But what if what would this one be? 1 plus the limit as x approaches 1 from the positive. Of f of x. So as you trace along the graph approaching 1 from the positive side, the function values approach negative infinity. Now we're, we're looking at the graphs of these <laughs> to figure this out. Could this be done analytically? Meaning just using the function? Why not? Why couldn't these be evaluated analytically? Can't plug in the one, and it's a non-removable discontinuity. So this, these types of limits need to be done graphically. And I, I actually think, for the most part, on your assignment, the graph's going to be given to you. I was trying to look through. I don't think you actually have to graph any of these. This last assignment you have given us. Wait, wait. Oh. Well, wait. There you go. Yeah. Let me read this. Find the limit if it exists. My job and my desire to learn. Here comes. Uh, yeah, there are a few you have to grab. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, Sorry. There is the one. Keep checking. Anyway, <laughs> let's go to the next subtopic: vertical asymptotes. That was pretty easy. Yeah, that was. Speak for yourself, Kate. When would I ever speak for you? Now, I kind of mentioned the criteria for a vertical asymptote and uh, being different than like a hole or a gap in the graph, but we need to make a formal definition here. And the one out of the book isn't super hard to remember. So given h of x is equal to f of x divided by g of x and let f and g be continuous and an open interval Containing C, <coughs> C 
So, if... And C is just any number. C is any real number. If F of C does not equal 0, and G of C does equal 0, and there exists an open interval containing C Then h of x has a vertical asymptote. At x equals c. Woo! I think that's the simplest way you can set that. <laughs> Let's try to pick and piece our way through this. Yeah, you know, seriously. Down. Being able to discern information from a mathy definition like this is really helpful on an AP exam. Uh, so, what kind of function? First of all, what kind of function is h of x? So what kind of function is h, h of x, you guys? Um, f of x divided by g of x. What type of function is that? A dividing function. Rational? A rational function. Rational function. Okay. f and g are continuous on some uh, open interval containing c. Now, if f of c does not equal 0 and g of c does equal 0, what does that mean? That there exists some open interval containing c. That's not a bad thought. Here's here here are two different okay. Here are two different things I want you to take a look at. Take a look at this function. Let's call this g of x. Let's take a look at this function f of x. I'm just trying to illustrate this right here. If f of c doesn't equal 0, but g of c does equal 0. Let's say that over here, c equals negative 7. But over here, c equals 2. So what it's saying is for a specific c value, the numerator and the denominator can't both equal 0. Did you see what that says? Isn't f function the numerator and g function is the denominator? What this part of the definition is saying is that for a specific c value, the g or the denominator has to equal 0, but not the numerator. This one here over here, this, this g function, for example, if I chose c equals 2, what happens? Both the numerator and the denominator equals 0. Does that mean there's a horizontal, or I'm sorry, a vertical asymptote at 2? No. And what type of discontinuity? It's still discontinuous. C can equal 2. So it's still a discontinuity, but it's not a vertical asymptote. What would it be? It would be a hole. Why? Well, you can factor this and remove the discontinuity, right? So it's saying F of C can't equal 0, but G of C does have to equal 0. Over here, if I let C equal negative 7, then is the numerator 0? No. What is? Just the denominator. So because F of C doesn't equal 0, but G of C does, what kind of gap? Or what kind of discontinuity is this for this function over here? 
That would be a vertical, that would be vertical acid, though. Do you see the difference? Yeah. That's what this is explaining. If the numerator isn't zero, but the denominator is at the same C value, yeah. then it, uh, it's undefined. And in particular, it represents a vertical acid, though, and not just a hole in the graph. Does that make more sense now? Yeah. yeah. So really, all you're doing at this point would be an example like this. Let's do example, what is it, three? Example three? Example two? Well, how do you like that? All right, example two. Fine. All vertical asymptotes. So, all right, it starts out real easy and it stays real easy for most of it. Let's do those two. speed this up. Sorry, y'all. Is there a point where the denominator is going to equal zero? Is there an, a certain x value for which the denominator equals zero, I mean? So does the numerator equal zero at negative one? No. So we conclude there's a vertical asymptote at x equals negative one. factor first. If you remove the removable discontinuities, you'll be able to find the vertical asymptotes much easier. So uh, the numerator is x plus 4, x minus 2, denominator, x plus 2, x minus 2, We have a removable discontinuity. So the function is still not defined at positive 2. But it's not a vertical asymptote. What type of gap? It's just a hole. Okay. So it's not continuous there, but it's not because um, of a vertical asymptote. So now we have a, a numerically equivalent function here x plus 4 over x plus 2. So. The vertical asymptote is at x equals negative 2. Now just, just for sake of time, real quick, jot down this uh, picture of the graph, real quick. We have a vertical asymptote at negative 2, the horizontal <coughs> asymptote is 0. Sorry, the horizontal asymptote is not 0. What is the horizontal asymptote? It's one. it's one. We have a y-intercept at two. We have an x-intercept at negative four. And so this piece of the graph is going to come down like that. This piece of the graph is going to look like this. And what's going to happen when x equals 2? What kind of a gap? So here's x equals 1, here's x equals 2. So the graph, when it gets to x equals 2, has to have a little hole there, and then it continues on like that. So just to answer some follow-up questions, does this exist? 
exist the limit of f of x as x approaches negative 2. Does that limit exist? No. How come? It's approaching two different places. Places from either side, right? Mm -hmm. Would a one sided limit exist? Yes. Of course. Does this limit exist? The limit as x approaches positive 2 of f of x. No. Does that limit exist? Yeah. Even though the function isn't continuous there? You sure? Yeah. How do we know it exists? Because the approaching the same. From either side of. Positive two, the graph is approaching the same spot. How would we find out what that limit is? Once we've taken out the removable discontinuity, <laughs> how would we find that limit? I'm talking about this one here, the bottom one. Plug it into where? The one that we've taken the removable discontinuity out of, right? Well, it wouldn't make sense to plug it in the original one because it'd be able to find. But if we plug it here, it's 6 over 4, so 3 halves. Anyway, that's about it. There will be a uh, review packet, I guess you can say. Yeah.